This high-end liquid-cooled server doesn't just have liquid-cooled CPUs. The memory is liquid-cooled, the networking is liquid-cooled, even some of the random bits on the motherboard are liquid-cooled. Not only that, but you can fit up to four nodes and eight CPUs in a single 2U server, and that's not even the craziest because this has four three kilowatt liquid-cooled power supplies. This is something that I've wanted to do for a long time, so we'll, let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Patrick from SDH, and today we're gonna take a look at two systems from MyTech Computing. Now, you might say, who is MyTech? Number one, they are the company behind Tyen. They also make a lot of cloud servers, and more pertinent to this discussion is they are the company that bought the Intel DSG business. Now, you might not know about Intel DSG. Intel DSG was literally a systems group that built servers within Intel and sold them all around the world for different applications. They could be things like OEM applications, they could also just be like certain regions and certain deals, or even some high performance computing clusters. Now I've wanted to show you the liquid cooled version of these servers for years, and somewhere in that whole DSG to MyTech transition, I finally got approval to go do that. And so I am going to say that MyTech is sponsoring this video because they sent these systems. Of course, we didn't go buy eight nodes of dual socket servers to go and do a video. Of course not, guys. So I just want to say thank you to the folks there. But for today's video, I don't think we should do it on this set. Instead, I think we should head over to the other set because we got some big systems and I really want to show you why these things are so cool. Okay, so in front of me, I have two Denali Pass systems from MyTech. Now these originally were sold and shipped by Intel, but as MyTech purchased the Intel DSG business, these systems are now considered MyTech systems. Okay, now in front of me, I have a two to you four node Denali Pass systems. On the top, as you're seeing it here, we have the liquid cooled system. On the bottom, we have the air cooled system. And before we get too far, I just wanna point out that Denali Pass is the code name that Intel actually gave this series. So you're gonna see it on the screen behind me, but there are a ton of different options. We are just looking at the 2U four node options with dual CPUs per, but there's other things. Like if you wanna have GPUs, you can totally go put like Ponvecchio GPUs or something like that in a system like this, get it liquid cooled, all that kind of stuff. And we actually did our Intel Xeon Max review back in the day in a system just like this. Although it was the 2U air-cooled version. But of course, you're here for the hardware, so let's get to the front of the systems real quick. The front of the systems has two rows and two columns, or just a two by two matrix of dual socket nodes. So each node is about half the width of a rack, and then you have two stacked on top of each other, and that gives us our four node configuration. Now, something that's a little bit different about these servers is that they actually go all the way across. So you don't have things like power supplies or anything like that. These are full half width servers. And what that practically means is that there's more room for things like memory sockets for cooling all kinds of stuff in that because you don't have like power supplies or something sitting in the way and looking at the faceplate of all these nodes you're going to see a couple common features first thing you're going to see is that we have two slots which are pcie risers this faceplate also though has all of our io so we have a high density connector which has things like our vga port and all that kind of stuff you need to get that off of here you can do that and then the other thing you have is you have a usb port you have your power button and then you have two nic ports now that's one of those is a management port the other one is a 10 gigabit network networking port. So you do have some built-in networking that's not necessarily like super high speed, but at least it's not one gig. The other cool thing though is that the latching mechanism is super easy to use on this. You pop in these little tabs, pull down the bar, and then the nodes just slide out. This is one of the slickest locking solutions that you're gonna see on any of these. Okay, so let's take out an air-cooled unit and look at what this thing looks like. Now something that's super easy about these air-cooled units is getting to the memory and CPU sockets. On some systems, these things have screws and all that kind of stuff just to keep the plastic in here really tight and keep the airflow guides on. But in a server like this, it's pretty darn easy. You just pop these two little tabs on either side and then you pop off the top. And once you do that, you're inside the system. And what you can see here is that we have our two CPUs. Now these are fourth generation or fifth generation Intel Xeon scalable CPUs. CPUs. We can also have things like Intel Xeon Max and all kinds of cool stuff here. And then we also have eight DIMMs per CPU for 16 DIMMs total. So this is a single or a one DPC setup because we only have one DIMM per channel, but it also is nice because it fits, you know, pretty high density and it gives you all the memory bandwidth for the platform. So on this side of the chassis, we have expansion slots. And specifically, we have two PCIe by 16 expansion slots. They're low profile, but there are at least two of them. And then on the bottom, we have both our one gig management NIC as well as our 10 gig NIC. 
Okay, so let's talk about the liquid cooled option over here. Now, what you're gonna see is that we have our two Cool IT liquid cooling blocks. Now, these liquid cooling blocks, I think there are quite a few, just frankly, two four node systems that have liquid cooling. So that's not necessarily exciting by itself, but what is exciting is all the rest of the liquid cooled components in the system. So for example, you're gonna see that on our dims over here, we actually have these like little kind of heat spreaders. And then in the middle, we have the versions where you have a liquid cooling block that actually cools your dims. The cool thing here is that the dims don't need to be cooled by fans. And that is very different. That's also why we have things like those crazy liquid cooled power supplies that we'll get to when we get to the back of the server. Instead, let's move that way and let's talk about some of the other cool things here. So the cooling distribution in this not only cools the CPUs, but it also cools the memory. And there's additional cooling blocks underneath these PCIe risers. Now these cooling blocks are designed to cool motherboard components. That means the PCH that usually would have a heatsink on it in a system like this. You also have things like the 10 gig NIC, you'll have the one gig NIC, the baseboard management controller, all of those types of things. Even the M.2 storage can be cooled by these liquid cooling blocks and there are options to go and cool your expansion cards as well. So if you put a PCIe card in here, you don't have to cool it using air. Instead, you can use the liquid cooling to cool that, which is absolutely awesome and very different from some of the other systems that we see, especially ones that only cool the CPUs. The other really neat thing about this cooling setup is that the cooling and the liquid cooling doesn't use one of the PCIe IO like slots. So some of the systems that we've looked at previously, they actually use one of the PCIe IO slots and they say, hey, you know, you're gonna lose that riser slot, but we're gonna use that to go put our coolant out of. This is not that system. So instead of coming out like the front over here, what happens is you actually have the cooling that comes out on this side over here. So you have your guide pin plus your hot and cold coolant nozzles that are on this side. And something that I think is worth noting is just how much is different between the air-cooled and liquid-cooled versions here, right? It isn't the case where these are just like two blocks just plopped in and then little hoses going to the outside. I mean, this is a almost entire node cooling solution. And the idea here is that almost everything is cooled solely by liquid in this entire server. Now, I know a lot of folks out there are gonna say, hey, look, the fourth and fifth generation Intel Xeon scalable CPUs only went up to something like 385 watts. So even if you were using the Intel Xeon Max CPUs and you had 385 watts per, then that's only what, 770 watts or something like that? And that's true, but you have to remember that there's probably another like one to 200 watts or so of components in this system when it's fully configured and like, you know, running. And so you end up with like a half a U that's about one kilowatt of like power. I mean, that's, that's quite a bit. And then you have two of those. So that means that your one U power consumption is two kilowatts. And that's really why you have these liquid cooled solutions. And while a lot of other servers only have like two liquid cooling blocks for the CPUs and then call it a day once they get the hoses to the outside, this has a heck of a lot more going on. So let's keep going and get these nodes back in the system and keep looking. Okay, now in a ton of these 2U4 node designs, what you'll see is that there's a fan partition somewhere in the chassis. And you would usually call that this uh, right here, which is really interesting. And I'm not gonna be able to show you the air-cooled version because that's uh, underneath and these things are like you know, 200 pounds or something like that. But let me just kind of open this up and I'm gonna show you this one real quick. So what you'll see inside of here is that we have a cool IT liquid cooling distribution system in this, right? There's one giant copper one over here and that really cools all of our three kilowatt power supplies. And then what we have over here is our cooling tubes that go to blocks that end up being the mating parts for our nodes, right? So we have that those liquid cooling nozzles that we showed you on each node. Those nodes click into this right here. The other thing that you'll see in the center section is that the power situation is super cool. Instead of just having cables that are strewn about and like connected to different things, this actually has pretty nice insulated, you'll see red and blue insulated power leads that come from the redundant power supplies into feeding the nodes. Okay, now moving to the rear of the system, you're gonna notice some big differences between the liquid cooled and the air cooled versions. Now, the air-cooled version actually doesn't have fans that you really would get to in this manner, right, going from the top of the system. The air-cooled version has one of the coolest fan designs that I think you're gonna see in any of these 2U4 node systems. Okay, so if you go over here, you can just go pull out a power supply from the air-cooled unit, and the air-cooled unit has a 2.7 kilowatt power supply. There are four of them, so this has a ton of power, right, for the server. But I think the fan is super cool. So if you see, this power supply actually mates 
into the fan module. And then what you're gonna see on the back here is that we have our fan module that's connected to this. So if you want to go and service the fans, you don't necessarily have to go and open the chassis up. Instead, what you do is you pretty much pull out the power supply and then you pull the air-cooled like fan housing all the way out of the system. It's actually a really innovative idea and probably one of the only times I've ever seen this. But the liquid-cooled version of this has something that is way cooler. Now, this is a three kilowatt power supply and it is super heavy. The reason it's super heavy is because you're gonna see that not only do we have our power connector on the back for hot slot power, but we also have our liquid cooling nozzles. What you don't see in this entire three kilowatt power supply is a fan. These things are absolutely awesome. In fact, they have little blockers here, like just plain sheet metal here, just so that way you don't get airflow through the power supply because it's totally meant to be liquid cooled. All right, so one other bit we should look at is on the air cooled system. This is what the side fan modules look like. And here you're gonna see that these little fan modules actually have four 1U fans. So there's two on top, two on bottom. And so, uh, you know, you get four fans in a little module like this, and it's a total of two U height. But on the liquid cooled version, it's a little different. We've already shown you that all the way from, you know, this side where we have our PCIe cards, our 10 gig NIC, our PCH, BMC, all that kind of stuff. That all has liquid cooling blocks. We then have our CPU liquid cooling blocks, our memory liquid cooling blocks. Then when we get to our power supplies in the back, we have no fans, we have liquid cooling as well. But when you get to the very back, you're gonna see that we do have fan modules and it's a little dual fan module. You might wonder what this is. Well, the total liquid cooling solution here, even though it covers almost everything, there's still a couple of little components here and there in the mid plane, a couple of like little tiny components on the boards themselves that just don't get liquid cooled. And so what you do need is just a little bit of airflow through the system. So even though you can easily have four kilowatts or more of CPU compute and all that kind of stuff in the server, you only have a total of two little tiny dual fan modules cooling it of course, but you have the liquid cooling. And unlike the air-cooled version where these fan modules are two U, we only have one U because the other U is used for the giant Stobly liquid cooling inlet and outlet. So you have your cool liquid that comes in the blue side, your warm liquid that comes out of the red side, and that is how this works. Now, of course, that's just the server. Once you go from the server, you have to go to the rack manifold, then you go to a CDU, and that usually exchanges heat with your data center cooling loops. And so what this is part of is a larger liquid cooling solution. Again, if you wanna learn more about that, you know, we have the cool IT cooling blocks in here and uh, various cool IT parts in here. You can go see, we actually looked at the liquid cooling lab at cool IT up in Canada. And if you wanna see just how liquid cooling works, that's a really good way to go do that. But all of these liquid cooled components, like the CPUs, the memory, other components, like the three kilowatt power supplies, that's all well and good, but you probably want to know a little bit about why you do this. And so let's go talk about that on the other set. What I want to do is just kind of talk a little bit about the performance, power consumption, and just a little bit about the noise that you hear, at least different between the two systems. Now, it turns out that the air-cooled DSG systems were actually really good in terms of cooling. So you're not losing like a ton of performance. What you can do though, is you can put really high-end TDP or high TDP CPUs and run them a lot more efficiently. So performance-wise, you're not getting huge gain unless you can use something and really crank up TDP somehow. That is especially true in these two four-node systems because you have CPUs, one in front of the other and the second CPU always gets heated up more than the first CPU just because it's you know using the exhaust from the first CPU and then that has to go through the second CPU and that always means that you have warmer air so that's just kind of how these systems are built we've known that for years and I think a lot of folks have seen this but it is important when we talk about liquid cooling liquid cooling doesn't have that challenge of the second CPU and that also means that the ambient temperature in your data center doesn't need to be as low when you use liquid cooling because well you're removing the heat via the liquid rather than trying to make sure that you can force enough cool enough air and dense enough air because altitude matters as well. But where it really makes a big difference is on power. So a lot of folks don't know this, but a typical server these days uses something like 10 to maybe 12 to 15% of its power, especially when it's under load, just for cooling. And that's only part of the story because on the other hand, when you have even denser systems, whether that's you know GPU systems or these two four node systems, you start to see even more power consumption that is just 
due to fans and cooling. So it's not uncommon these days to see anywhere from 12 to 50% of a total system power just being used by like fan power consumption, especially in a modern air-cooled, very dense system. Now we didn't get all the way up to 20%, but these MyTech systems are super awesome because what they're doing is, uh, is kind of another level in terms of cooling so much more of the board. And so we are getting somewhere in anywhere from about 14 to 17%, depending on the workload and stuff, of lower power consumption using the liquid cooled versus the air cooled system, which is absolutely phenomenal. So the fact that the Intel DSG and now MyTech teams are doing things like cooling, you know, the NICs, they're also cooling things like the PCH, they're cooling other things like the Altera FPGA that's on these boards. I mean, they're cooling a ton of stuff, even the memory. And they're also liquid cooled systems that have fans in their power supply. So there's fans all the heck over a lot of liquid cooled systems. This is extremely different. There's two little fans and those are just really there to kind of cool the really low power passive components. So it's a different methodology, but on the other hand, it does give you better results in terms of your overall power consumption and power savings. Now we don't normally do noise on like big server, especially 2U4 node reviews. I don't think we've ever done noise on them because uh, they're always loud. But when you do have this kind of like full liquid cooling setup, you're just not running the fans. You don't have as many fans. They're not running as hard. And so as a result, it is a lot less like just loud next to the server. So if you've ever seen data centers, and I've definitely been to data centers where these things are fully racked, fully liquid cooled, those things are absolutely awesome and a pleasure to be around. Now it is in the data center, so most people don't really care as much, but if you are servicing and have to walk through a data center, have to give a customer demo or something like that, then uh, you know having a quieter data center is actually kind of neat. Now, of course, in every video, I like to have key lessons learned. And I think the first lesson that we learned is that the liquid cooling one, there's a lot of work that the Intel DSG, the MyTech and Cool IT teams went into to be able to go and really show this level of liquid cooling in a server. This is a lot more than just putting two liquid cooling blocks on CPUs and calling it a day, have fans moving all that air through everything, right? Especially in the era where we're starting to see NICs that are using like over hundred watts and stuff like that. I do think that more and more, we're gonna start seeing folks go to liquid cooling for more than just the CPUs. The second one though, is that I mentioned earlier in this video that MyTech is a giant company actually. They have these like giant manufacturing floors and stuff like that. But on the other hand, you know, they've always been kind of like behind the scenes, except for their brands like Tyen. I think the Intel or buying the Intel DSG business was a big step in that direction. And I think that the company is really gonna be focusing on putting more effort, I guess, around the MyTech name. And I am foreshadowing something that we are gonna be covering on the STH main site pretty soon. So definitely stay tuned for that. But hey guys, I hope you like this video and especially in this era of higher power server processors, GPUs, all kinds of stuff, I think it's more important than ever to really look at things like liquid cooling. And hey, you know what? If you did like this video, well, why don't you share it with your friends, but also give it a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.